Okay, everybody, mark this day on your calendar. A director is actually taking the blame for the failure of a tent pole property. This doesn't happen. This is Neon for Clownfish TV. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. We're going to talk about X-Men Dark Phoenix, its massive failure, and the fact that uh, the film's director, Simon Kinberg, is actually taking the blame for it. Oh my God, this doesn't happen. Compare this to Ryan Johnson, who blamed everybody but himself for uh, the the fan backlash around the, the Last Jedi. Now, The Last Jedi actually did uh, pretty well financially, but there was a lot of controversy about the movie. And uh, again, you had Ryan Johnson sort of lashing out at the fandom uh, for tanking his movie, and he was a little butthurt about it. Uh, Simon Kinberg actually is is owning up to it. So this is coming from Deadline. Dark Phoenix's director, Simon Kinberg, says, put it on me for the film's failures. Uh, for Simon Kinberg, the buck stops here when it comes to the failure of Dark Phoenix to live up to the commercial and critical success of previous films in the X-Men franchise. I'm here and I'm saying when a movie doesn't work, put it on me, Kinberg said in a podcast called The Business. I'm the writer-director of the movie. The movie didn't connect with audiences. That's on me. The film debuted last weekend, only scored $33 million at the U.S. box office. Um... An estimated 200 million production cost before marketing that's trouble. Not helping is the critical reception, which registered 23% rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, the lowest score ever for an X Men movie. Yeah, it's even lower than uh, uh, Origin, X Men Origin, and Apocalypse, and The Last Stand. The Last Stand gets a lot of crap, and Kinberg was actually involved with that one, too. But, uh, you know, I, I think it still had like a 50% or something like that. So, um, this report and deadline detailed the behind-the-scenes drama on the film's production, including the shocking news that the film was originally set up as a two-parter, leading to reshoots and script changes that made a mess. Now, this could actually uh, be partially Disney's fault. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that and where Captain Marvel actually fits in uh, to all this, because a lot of these changes may have been at Disney's request because of plans they had for Captain Marvel. Uh, despite the problems, Kimberg said he enjoyed working on the film and takes heart from several industryites who have shared their experiences. Kimberg cited a conversation with Ridley Scott from their work together on The Martian as something he takes comfort in. He said it was his favorite because it was just a great process and he learned a lot in the process of making it. And I thought about it over the years and I thought a lot uh, about over the weekend. Kinberg also received support from Tim Miller, with whom he worked on the first Deadpool. He wrote me an email having empathy for a movie that doesn't work, said Kinberg. People will come to see the movie differently and uh, out of the context of this particular moment, see things in it they'll appreciate and, and that he appreciate as a fan. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect, you know, there have been some movies, and I'll be honest, there have been some movies I've seen that maybe were, uh, didn't do very well at the box office that, uh, you know, I've watched later on. I'm like, you know, the movie wasn't as bad as as people may have to be. And actually, one of those movies, I would say, is, is X-Men The Last Stand. It has some good moments, it's just the movie didn't work all together, and I kind of, I kind of lump it in with uh, Spider-Man 3, where there were some good individual moments in the movie, um... Actually, I would say some of the best in, in the entire Sam Raimi trilogy, but that particular movie just didn't work. It was a mess. It was rushed. Clearly, it was meant to be more than one movie. They just kind of smooshed stuff together. It didn't make sense. You had some miscasting. Uh, you know, Raimi didn't understand Venom at all, and it just made for a huge mess. And this is kind of the vibe, you know, we're getting with Dark Phoenix. Now, disclaimer, I haven't seen the movie yet. I'll check it out on home video, but it was one of those films I had, like, no desire to see this movie. None whatsoever. And this is the first time that there's actually been an X-Men movie out that I had zero interest in seeing. I was sort of apprehensive about Apocalypse, but I still checked it out on home video as soon as it came out. Um, you know, and this one just, there was, there was no interest. I had no interest in this movie at all. So now if you're expecting China to save Dark Phoenix, because that does happen sometimes with, uh, you know, these big budget Hollywood movies where maybe they don't perform in the U.S., but they perform well in China. Not going to happen. Actually, Phoenix took a huge, huge nosedive uh, over the weekend. It opened with $32.1 million last weekend, which is almost as much as it made in the U.S. and in China. The second weekend gross dropped by 90% to $3.3 million. So it was on fifth place. It was in the fifth place on the charts uh, after 10 days. That That's, that's bad. So China is not going to save Dark Phoenix. Now... With Dark Phoenix doing so poorly, and with Disney buying uh, buying Fox, that puts the brakes on some other plans 
that they had for the X-Men series. They were actually going to do a Beast spin-off movie reintroducing Wolverine as, I, I think, another actor playing Wolverine and also introducing uh, Mr. Sinister and some other, other stuff from uh, X-Men lore. Obviously, that's not going to happen now. So this uh, came from comicbookmovie.com. Dark Phoenix director Simon Kinberg said no to a Beast movie because he had plans for Wolverine. As you've no doubt already heard, longtime X-Men editor John Ottman wanted to helm a Beast movie, but Simon Kinberg put the brakes on that because of his own plans for the franchise. So Dark Phoenix second weekend at the box office was a total disaster as bad reviews and negative word of mouth put the Phoenix in the ground for good. On Friday, though, we learned that longtime X-Men editor John Ottman was hoping to direct was hoping to director a Beast movie written by his assistant Byron Burton. However, with Simon Kinberg in charge of the franchise at the time, Fox told Ottman he would have to check with him for approval, and the writer-turned-director refused because he didn't want to become unduly influenced by it. Now it's been revealed that Kinberg was mulling over the idea of reintroducing Wolverine to the X-Men universe following Hugh Jackman's retirement from the role, so Logan appearing elsewhere... He would have been in the Beast movie to ha help Hank McCoy battle the Wendigo, would have conflicted with those plans. Apparently, Professor X would have been the one to track Wolverine down. Kimberg left a lot of unresolved plot threads with Dark Phoenix, um, but Ottman's Beast movie would have finally made good use of those Mr. Sinister teases. The idea was we would have Sinister as this multi-film villain orchestrating things, Burton confirms. Actually, I would have loved to have seen a live action Mr. Sinister, but not going to happen. Um, you can read the screenplay for Fear of the Beast by clicking here. So they actually have the screenplay. That's interesting. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description. The Dabari are revealed to be Dark Phoenix alien villains, and uh, Jessica Chastain uh, was an extremely obscure character from the comic books. That wasn't always going to be the case, though. And Ty Sheridan confesses that the movie's original ending would have featured Cyclops battling an army of scrolls at the United Nations. This explains how the villains were able to shapeshift and common sense says the reshoots. The reshoots saw them become the Dabari because the delayed release date meant Fox wouldn't be able to beat Captain Marvel to the punch. So, again, blame Captain Marvel for some of the problems with Dark Phoenix. Now, I think Dark Phoenix probably had many, many, many other problems, but the fact that it was supposed to be a two-movie film, the fact that they were going to use the scroll and actually make them villains uh, is really interesting. Now, if this had come out in November, like it was supposed to, they would have beat, you know, Captain Marvel to the punch by four months. And uh, now that, you know, Disney has bought Fox, they're probably like, well, no, we're putting the scroll in Captain Marvel. So yeah, that's not going to work for us. Uh, take the scroll out of it, make them something else. Uh, no, we're not doing two movies. Let's just, you know, smash this thing together, get it out the door because after this movie, um, you guys are done with the X-Men after this movie. And that's really how it feels. It feels like this was just kind of a, a rush job, I guess, to get this movie out the door uh, to move on to the Disney era of the MCU era of the X-Men. So, um, so yeah, after all, there have been rumblings that Marvel Studios uh, led to the final act being changed. The last thing Fox would have wanted would be to face criticism for using an inferior version of the scrolls, as critics would not have shied away from taking aim at them for failing to live up to what had come before. So if they actually made the scrolls, you know, bad guys... Um, you know, I, I guess, you know, they would have had some criticism for not making them the kinder, gentler scrolls that we saw in Captain Marvel. The thing is, is when we've had character overlap between the MCU and the X-Men universe, uh, the X-Men actually did it better. I think, I think their version of Quicksilver was, uh, infinitely better than the Quicksilver we saw in Age of Ultron. And it's very possible they had made the scrolls actual bad guys, um, that, that uh, you know, comic book fans would have preferred their scrolls to the MCU scrolls, which were just sort of, you know, misunderstood, uh, misplaced, you know, outcasts. Uh, they, they were not uh, really what I would consider, you know, the comic book, the comic book version of the scrolls, which were just completely badass. But yeah, just to wrap this up, um, it is refreshing to see a director take responsibility, although I think he's falling on his sword. Uh, I, I, I am thinking that studio meddling had more to do with Dark Phoenix uh, failing as miserably as it did. And just, you know, people just, they're not into this this iteration of the, the X-Men. I mean, it peaked with uh, Days of Future Past. It peaked with Logan, and you really can't top that. I mean, they should have just gone out on a high note and just said, look, Logan was was the end of the X-Men. And, and that would have probably been fine. For most people, I think that would have been fine. So... 
Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants, gaming videos, art videos, and more here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon. I will talk to you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.